Getting started with creating web pages can seem a little daunting, but a little exciting at the same time. There's a lot of material that we'll cover through this class, but I want to give you an exercise which will get you started right now to give you a chance to actually create a web page and start to demystify the process of creating HTML. So we're going to create a simple HTML file and then see how that HTML file looks in a web browser. Now we mentioned that HTML is a scripting language. What we're going to do is we're going to create a series of tags. These tags are interpreted by a web browser, such as Internet Explorer or Firefox, Safari. There are many web browsers available on many different platforms. Your HTML tells that web browser how to display the data that you're going to put into your HTML files. Getting started, I'll type open caret HTML and close caret. I'll add a few carriage returns and then I'll close this element using a closing HTML tag. What's a closing HTML tag? A closing HTML tag is almost identical to the opening HTML tag except the syntax is slightly different. Instead of open caret HTML we have open caret forward slash and then HTML close caret. These two tags, closing HTML and opening HTML, define what is referred to as an element. We'll get into elements and tags in greater detail, but for right now, we need an opening and closing tag for every item that we wish to display within our web page. Now, the web pages that you're going to create are going to have components of the page which are visible to the viewer, as you'd expect. But your web pages are also going to reference materials that are used to format your page but are not readily seen by the viewer. We will separate the content which is necessary for the page to function and the content which we want the viewer to be able to see into two different areas within our HTML document. The portion of our HTML code, that's what we're creating here, HTML code, that's used by the browser to help display the page properly is contained within the head element. I'll create that element with an opening head tag and a closing head tag. Notice how the syntax matches that of the HTML tag, the closing tag having a forward slash after the opening caret. Using my cursor keys on my keyboard and the delete key, I'll format these tags such that the tags are easy on my eye. What does that mean? I'm going to use tabs and spaces to position these items on my screen so that they're easy to read. In this case, I'm going to tab before the opening head tag and tab before the closing head tag using the tab key on my keyboard. Also, I'll now create the portion of my web page which will structure the content which I want the viewer to see. I'll do that using the body tag. To follow the evolving structure which we're creating in this document, I'll hit the tab button to space over and I'll create the opening and closing body tags. Now out of habit, I like to close tags as soon as I create them. In this example, we're not going to create a very long HTML document, but as you create more complex documents, you're going to have many lines of code inside your file, increasing the chances of forgetting to close an HTML element. To protect myself from myself in making that error, I tend to close elements with a closing tag as soon as I create them. Since I've created my HTML document, which I'll clean up a little bit using my cursor keys and the delete key, I'll input into the head tag those items which are necessary for the page to function but not necessarily within the viewable pane of the browser window. One item which we'll put into the head tag is a title. That title will display at the top of the browser window much like the word untitled displays at the top of this document window. I'll create my title using an opening title tag and I'll close that element immediately with a closing title tag. Contained between 
these two tags, the closing title tag and the opening title tag. I will put the title which I wish to have displayed at the top of my web browser. In this case, I'll type the words, Hello World. This sequence of an opening title tag, content, and a closing title tag create what's referred to as an HTML element. The components of that element being subject matter, in this case the words Hello World, surrounded by an opening and closing tag, essentially a tag sandwich. Now I'm going to add another tab before my opening title tag. I'm doing this to structure my code so that it's easy to see at first glance what elements are contained within other elements. This is referred to as nesting. The title element is nested within the head element. Now I'm going to create some content that I want the viewer to see in the main body of the web page. I'll come down to the body tag, hit my return key, and hit my tab button twice. Now I'll begin to create a paragraph. To create this paragraph I'll use the opening paragraph tag, which is simply a P. I'll hit my return key a few times and tab over a couple of times hitting the tab key twice on my keyboard and close this paragraph element as soon as I create it. Now that I've created my tags, I'll put the content that I want contained within that element into my HTML page. I'm going to type a quick sentence. This is my first web page. I built it with HTML. Now this is a good point to stop and save your work. I encourage you to save your work fanatically. It's usually only after you've created something that you really like, that took a long time and a lot of energy, that your computer crashes, you lose all your work, and generally have a lousy hour. To avoid that from happening, under your file menu, select Save As, since we've never saved this file before, and then save your file to your desktop. To do this, we'll give our HTML file a commonly used name, that name being index.htm. Note that the extension of this file is .htm. I could use the extension .html. That is perfectly valid and perfectly correct. However, it is more common to save your files as .htm, which is what I'm going to do in this lesson. Now I'll click the Save button and I can see on my desktop my new file has been saved and now I'm ready to continue working on building my web page.